Hey guys, welcome to RD Custom Diecast. What we got here today is a little restoration, and it's going to be this 1934 Ford Coupe. It's made in 1979, is the copyright date on it. And if you take a look here, it's seen some better days. Look at the corrosion on the bottom of that base. Uh, the paint looks like it's been painted a few times. Uh, it's missing the headlights. It's got some damage to the windshield and inside it is horrible it looks like there's a rat's nest in there overall it's in pretty rough shape it's been well played with apparently and we're gonna take it today and see if we can make this look like a million bucks let's go ahead and drill it apart it's got only got one post on this so it's gonna be pretty easy to get it apart it hooks on the back Once we get in here, we're going to really be able to see what we got here. And looky there, that engine compartment, the interior, not so good. And there's our little fuzzies there. Pretty nasty. Have no idea what that is, but let's get rid of it. And the windshield. Let's take a look at that windshield. Now that windshield is in pretty rough shape. It's got paint, discoloration. We're going to try to clean it up and see what happens. If we can't get it clean, we can either sand it out, put some uh, floor gloss on it. And the base, or the uh, fenders itself, uh, it's pretty dirty. Uh, that seat's pretty dirty as well. The base, yeah, you can see rust, corrosion. Everything about this is pretty nasty. So we're going to go ahead and start the cleanup process on this. I get out the clean strip, aircraft stripper. I use the Ultra. It works really good. We're just going to give it a little dunk, let it marinate. I like just to throw it in this jar, but you can brush it on either way. I just set it in this jar, seal it off, get it out of the way. And I'll have to smell it and I'll check back on it later. That's base. We're gonna cut those wheels off. Those wheels are terrible. You could salvage them if you wanted. Uh, those axles are rusted. Uh, it's pretty bad. We're gonna see if we can get those axles out of there, slide them out. A lot of, a lot of junk here, guys. Let's go ahead and cut these wheels off here. We'll wind up trying to slide uh, these axles out. If it doesn't work, it's okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Those axles are pretty rusted so to that base, so we may have to just kind of manhandle them out with some uh, needle nose. But let's see. Let's see if we can just pull them out first. Snip those ends off, and we'll slide out. That one did. No dice. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just peel this out of here. And these are crimped down pretty tight. Uh, that pins those axles down. But we're just gonna peel it out. It will come out with a little bit of force. And we could either open that channel up or use some uh, axle channel uh, axle tubes on it, but we'll have to see. All this looks pretty rough. We're gonna have to take the engine compartment, take that seat, all put in some super clean. That chrome will come off that engine compartment or the engine. So, and we're gonna probably put this in super clean. It's pretty filthy looking there. And we're gonna have to clean that up. We're gonna put some lime away in distilled water. Look at all that junk in there and rust right there. It's just terrible. We'll get it cleaned up. We'll wire wheel it. We will uh, polish it as well. So that right there, it's fairly disgusting, but it's not too bad. It's not as bad as the rest of the car. All right. 
we're gonna go ahead and dunk the uh, base in some lime oil distilled water 50 50 mix three minutes guys only three minutes so let's stick it in there I would suggest not walking away from this it starts getting dark you pull it out uh, pull it out before it gets dark but three minutes is about the max it I'm gonna leave that in there we'll pull it out and just a second we will wire wheel it and we'll polish it I'm not gonna have Y'all see every step of this process, but we'll get some of it and we'll wire brush it a little bit. We, we probably won't wire wheel it. We'll probably just wire brush it. Got it out. You can see those bubbles in there. That's that line where we're working. And we're going to use a little polish on here to spread it around. And this is the Blue Magic. Uh, you can use Flitch. You can use Mother's uh, Mag Polish. They all work. I've got them all. I gravitate towards this. Works pretty good. I'll wind up using my rotary tool and just with a cloth wheel on it start off slow we'll speed it up that way you don't have to watch the whole process and this is going to tell us if we're going to need a zinc plate this if we see anything that's worn all the way through uh, we'll get a zinc plate but let's see if we can just clean it up some of these dark areas in the corner just take a toothbrush it's just the polish you just got to clean it up okay there we go now look at that that cleaned up really nice it's a million times better than what it was we can go with that we'll clean it up a little bit better with a soft toothbrush and some soap and uh, on the exhaust pipe parts we might use some Molotov uh, chrome just on that area but everything else looks good we salvaged it okay with the super clean opened up we're just gonna dunk all our plastics in there hopefully this uh, windshield and everything's gonna get cleaned up mainly the windshield everything else is gonna clean up fine it's gonna strip that engine compartment all that chrome off of there or just about all of it uh, it don't always get all of it uh, but that's okay we're gonna go ahead and paint over it and chrome some of it out so it'll be okay this just close it up that way it don't spill just get out of the way let it marinate for a while pretty simple we got this out got it everything rinsed off as you can see everything cleaned up pretty good we'll paint those fenders that cleaned up really well this cleaned up really really well you can see where the headlights are missing we got some 3d printed that I printed out we'll glue up on there and fix that issue and we'll paint this a flat black we're gonna get rid of that steering wheel I don't like it we'll put a custom steering wheel on it We'll detail this out. Now on the uh, casting itself, we're gonna go ahead and if I can hang on to it, uh, use a wire wheel on it and clean it up and use a little steel wool, clean up these flashing areas. And I'll polish it out. We're not gonna go through every step of this, guys. You guys, if y'all see me do enough customs, you can go take a look at some other videos if you want some really detailed work. I really didn't mention that post I went ahead and drilled and tapped that. You need to do that before you put paint and everything on it. That way you don't mess up your paint job after the fact. But everything's cleaned up pretty good, or cleaning it pretty good at this point. Uh, I'll use this wire wheel real light on here, and then I'll go back over and polish it out. If I see any gouges or anything, uh, we'll go ahead and sand out what we can. If there's any real bad little pit holes or anything sometimes I'll fill those this casting looks pretty good overall okay I went ahead and sprayed some silver sealer Audubon silver sealer and sorry guys somehow my video got screwed up and put on slow-mo right here so bear with me for just a second we'll get past this It would have been cool if my fat hand was in the way you could actually see the uh, paint out of my But there we go, and we're going straight to paint. Let this dry. And we're going to use a Candy 2O by Createx, and this is one of their automotive lines. I'm going to use Midnight Blue. 
And I think I'm gonna go with three coats here. I want a darker blue, but two coats really looks really sharp on this. I've uh, painted with this before. Uh, kind of on the fence about if I want to stop on two or go to three, but we're probably gonna go three. That first coat, it's not gonna be real super heavy. Use, a, use it to where it's a tack coat. Make sure you don't use that candy TO straight. Follow your directions on mixing it because it has to have a carrier because it is a, a dye pigment. And we got the fenders done. Let's go on the second coat here. This has dried, guys, between coats. And this is where you'll really start seeing that midnight blue start to take shape. And this second coat really looks sharp on here. Uh, it's personal preference. I want a little bit darker, so we're gonna go a little bit darker with this. So we're gonna get this done, and we're gonna go with at least one more coat. Look at how great that's coming out, guys. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, uh, like, share, Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this build. There we go. Look at that. Everything's looking really good right at this point. So we got those fenders done. Got the body done. Could use one more coat. Get a little bit darker, but looky there. That that's looking really good. And hey, a custom's personal preference. So if you want to stop at two coats, you stop at two coats. You want to go to four coats, go to four coats. Just realize on your candies, the more coats you put, the darker it's going to get. And we're going to go a little bit heavier on this coat. We don't want it running. We don't want it dripping. Uh, but we're going to want a wet coat on here. And after that, I'm going to let it dry. Man, this is looking really good, guys. Already looks better than what it looked like when we started off. That was one of our flea market finds, the 34 Coupe. Now, what I've done here, I decided to go ahead and use the body lines here. And we're going to use some Molotile uh, pen, the ink out of it. And we're going to apply that with a brush. I went ahead and taped it off with this vinyl, just following the body lines. And we'll do a little detail work on the hinges and the uh, door handle. And we'll uh, handle all the trunk. Make sure you got that uh, your tape down good or your vinyl. And it's going to look like this right here. What do you guys think? Got the hinges and everything done, the door handles. Went ahead and put a little trim around the uh, front and rear glass. Now, here you can see that we need to put these headlights on the engine compartment here over by that front grill since I got broke off. I went ahead and 3D printed these and I stretched them out in CAD because I wanted more of a bullet style instead of the flat headlights. And here's what we come up with. Looks really good. We just need to paint it up, detail it out. We went ahead and have a black base and you'll see everything come together as we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut the steering wheel off, guys. I don't like to use uh, steering wheels on here. I like to use my custom steering wheels. I know inside you can't hardly really see them. But it's just added a little custom touch. And we're gonna go back to uh, the paint booth. We're gonna shoot the 2K clear at this point. Make sure you use a respirator. That's what I was showing you there, guys. Make sure you got plenty of ventilation. 2K clear is no joke. And we're gonna go ahead and hit these fenders. Give it a nice little coat here. And you want this to go on wet. You don't want it running. You don't want it too wet. Uh, but you do want it shining. You don't want it going on dry. You'll have a much better finish if you do it this way. Guys, that looks great, and we've only got that first coat. When it dries, it's going to look just as good. Now let's go ahead and do the body. We're probably going to just do two coats. You can do one coat and leave it. Uh, I like to go with two coats. Uh, you can even go three if you want. I've gone three. I've even gone four coats. It's really unnecessary. 
Now I went ahead and did put a uh, water slide on there for the uh, license plate. It has RD Customs, Texas license plate. That's where I was born and raised. Spent the first 40 something years of my life there. So that's, I use that or I use my uh, logo. So I think that looks good on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and let that set. And since it's dried now, we are gonna go with coat number two. Sorry my big old fat hands in the way. I didn't have this camera positioned very well, but you guys get the point. As you can see, I'm using a pretty heavy hand on this. Uh, just not enough where it's gonna be dripping or anything. Make sure you get plenty of coverage. Do a 50-50 overlap if you can. And I use a .5 needle in my airbrushes for my 2K clear. For my regular base coats and everything, you usually use a .3. Seems to work out really well. At 2K clear, you really need that .5 or uh, even better yet, if you can find a .7, the Grex line will take a .7 needle. Let's go ahead and finish up this body. Looking good, guys. This looks amazing. When we get done with this, we're going to let it set for about eight hours. I will not touch this, and we'll come back and take a look at it. I may go over it just a little bit more here before I stop. Just checking the evenness of the coat, see if I had any missed areas. And I'll give it a quick little, one little quick wet blast again. There we go. Look at that, guys. Beautiful, beautiful. Got everything cleaned up, everything setting out here. That 2K clear is amazing. The interior, look at that. The seat's great. Everything looking good. Look at that base, guys. Went ahead and put some real wider wheels on it. Sorry I didn't show that to you. They just came in the mail to me, and I looked at them. I said, these will look great on there. So went ahead and went with the real riders from uh, Mattel. Usually you Sam Ed wheels, but uh, hey, let's go ahead and keep uh, everything Mattel on here this one, for this uh, build. And didn't have to do anything but glue them in place. Uh, Went ahead and took care of this engine uh, compartment detail, the dash, the steering wheel, the headlights, uh, the trim ring around the headlights are chromed, the headlights itself are white, chrome on the grill, uh, chrome accents here and there. Uh, look at that guys, I really like how the trim ring worked out, hopefully you guys can see that. Sorry about my uh, speaker being in the way there. And look at that fender. Look at that 2K clear. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And we went ahead and detailed the uh, tail lights. You really can't see it too good in this light, but hopefully you can when we get it on the rotisserie. Now look at this, guys. Look at that body. Absolutely gorgeous. And that midnight blue is stunning on here. I almost went back with the red. Wasn't sure what the uh, factory color was on it. And I said, you know what? This is a custom. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And kind of went with this. Almost Dallas Cowboy colors. So it looks really good. Didn't mean it to come out that way. Now this uh, windshield, look at that. It is still in not great shape. Uh, it still has discoloration, but I think we're going to go ahead and just cast a brand new clear windshield. It's what I'd rather have in here. So we're going to do that. we got the tools, and I'll show you how to do that next. Now, I could have sanded this out, and we could have polished it, and we could have put it in some floor gloss, and it would have been just fine. Or we could have stuck it in there like that. It would have looked okay. But we're going to go this route. So I've got a couple windshields I try to do at once, that way I don't waste the uh, material. It's .5 Pet G Clear. To get sheets of it, cut it down to size. And we're gonna vacuum form this. We're gonna heat it up. Once it starts sagging, we put it in there and turn on the vacuum and that's what it does. It's gonna suck it right around those uh, factory windshields. A .5 works great. It's a little bit thin guys but it's not gonna matter it's gonna be inside that car and if it doesn't stay in place like you want it to just glue it down on the inside you're not gonna see it I tried it uh, one mil one mil is a little bit thick it does not have a good fitment in these cars so I do not recommend the one mil or the 0.8 I would stick to the 0.5 the 0.8 you can try 
Uh, but I think you're still going to have some fitment problems with it. And you can see it's pretty rigid still. It's just it's just not as rigid as the factory. Now, here we go. This is what you got. You've got the factory one and you got the clear one. Look how much better that clear is going to look in there. It's absolutely going to look great. And you don't have side windows in this. Even if you did, they'd be clear. They'll cast really good. Uh, but we trimmed all that out. We just used some scissors and a uh, hobby knife and we cut this out as close as we could to the factory and we'll set it in there and we're going to take a look and see how this looks in just a second. But check out the difference. I mean, it's night and day how well that does. And this is a dental forming tool that I'm using and I got it off of Amazon and it costs a little bit of money, but it's well worth it if you do these customs. You can also do interiors with this. Uh, you can use styrene uh, if you want to uh, for like the interiors. But let's go ahead and shove this in here and make sure it's going to fit. I know it's going to. Let's take a look at it. And it absolutely fits like a champ. We're going to glue it probably in place just to make sure it doesn't fall down once we get it back together. I don't think it will, but we're not going to chance it. Now look at this, how horrible this hot wheel looks i mean it's seen better days it is absolutely terrible it's got paint missing it's got the headlights missing and we went from that junker to this beauty right there tell me that isn't gorgeous right there so sorry about the lighting guys this it, this looks so much better outside but we got clouds out today and it's hard for me to report outside to get the true color of this candy guys thank you for joining me uh like, subscribe, share. Y'all have a great day.